over the past few weeks for Marvel's Midnight Suns, I think it's safe to say that I have put a fair amount of hours into it now. Whilst that's not great for my wife, I think currently she's away filing for the force. It does mean that I'm able to put out a ton of tips for the game day one. So in this video, we've got a nice simple one we're going to go with here. This is going to be the top 10 tips for new players. So let's dive in and let's start breaking these down. One of the first questions that comes up then with any kind of video game that has a dog in it is can you pet the dog and yes you can pet the dog in Marvel's Midnight Suns and you most definitely want to do it any chance you get so when you see Charlie either during the day or at night time make sure you pet them now the reason for that is they can give you various different resources one of them is arcane keys these are used to open arcane chests you get different resources within these chests you can gain arcane knowledge this will increase the amount of rewards you get from the arcane chest and probably the most important part is within the Abbey Grounds is four different challenge missions you get and the only characters that can take part in these missions would be the Hunter and Charlie. Now the more you actually pet Charlie, her levels will upgrade and when they upgrade it means you get higher tier versions of her cards and to be honest some of the later challenges I don't feel they would be possible if you actually didn't upgrade the cards on Charlie so make sure that you are doing that every single day. In the last tip we talked about how you can get arcane keys, one of the methods is via Charlie, the other method is exploring the abbey grounds, now you don't get a lot of these keys, there's various different chests you can use to open them, when you open the chest after a few days the contents of it respawn and the contents will be random, now the chests come in different rarities, you have common, rare, epic and then legendary, what you don't want to do is your common and rare chests don't open these at all do not use your keys on them because as you upgrade your arcane levels and that's something i'm going to talk about how you do in one of the later tips coming up but as you upgrade your arcane knowledge levels then you can actually open your common and your rare chests for free it won't cost you a key at all so you want to every so often go around the map make sure you open all these up you've got a ton of free resources give it a few days check your map and then once you're available you go back and you open them again and once again you won't require any arcane keys to do this. So this next tip here it's a route you want to follow day and night you will have random collectibles that will show up in and around the abbey so the particular route that I'm showing off in this video the collectibles will show somewhere along this route they are random but you will be able to see them easy enough you can see I've actually got my first one coming up here in just a second so you'll get credits you'll get resources for upgrading your cards you want to finish this off in the library when you're in the library as well every day you want to go around and you read the books because you'll gain arcane knowledge from doing this the books will randomly change so it's worthwhile doing because when you upgrade your arcane levels as we talked about in the last tip you can get to the stage where you can start to open your arcane chests that's your common and your rare for free and you also get the chance when you're doing this to find the cat so you can pet the cat just like you can pet the dog and this will give you some bonuses on the back of it as well but this is the route you want to do and once again you want to do this every day and night Next on your list of things you want to make sure you do daily, this is only available during the day, it's not available at night time, is your daily sparring. Now when you start off with this, when you've not yet researched into it, you'll get some friendship XP from doing this, occasionally you'll gain a level. When you actually upgrade this via research, one of the options it'll give you is the ability to give your heroes bonus stats when you actually do it. Now it's a set stat for the day, if you reload at night time before you get into the day, that particular stat will change, so you can in a way if you want, you can save score this until you get a particular stat and then the character being available that you want to upgrade as well you can only do this once every four days so you want to make sure you choose a character that will benefit from the stat so just to give you an example whenever this would come around with crit chance and crit rate i would always choose iron man if he was available and at the moment i've got iron man stats at the hard cap so i've got his crit rate at 50 percent and i've got his crit damage at 75 percent so he hits like an absolute truck and you will see that in later videos but make sure you're doing this daily sparring and make sure as well you're choosing the most relevant character in regards to the stat that will be upgraded. So 
So the friendship system then in Marvel's Midnight Suns is an exceptionally important one. When you max out your friendship at level 5, you unlock your Midnight Suns costume and also your Midnight Suns card. But on top of that as well, you can actually get prestige friendship levels. And every time you go up a level, it will give you a random stat. So you'll want to choose the best hangouts for your characters. I actually cover that when I do the deep dive videos for all the heroes. But in regards to the gifts, I would say don't buy your rare and common gifts. The reason being that the ability to go on a hangout in a character and give them a gift only comes around every three or four days so you're not going to run short in gifts originally i was buying a ton of gifts and i've got so many in stock i can't actually get used to them only buy the legendary gifts these are generally comics and the great thing about these as well is it's really obvious who the comic is for it will be for example if you see an iron man comic you're going to give that to iron man and you'll get the most amount of friendship points so once again just make sure you buy your legendary gifts and don't worry about gloss you get an absolute ton of this The next tip we have here is in regards to increasing your training level. You can see this up the top right. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually see the breakdown of what this offers, but your training level will allow you to do extra damage via environmental attacks. One of the last upgrades you get allows you to get a card redraw when you knock back an enemy into one of your heroes, which can be really useful. Now, the way you upgrade this, it will be via your daily sparring, your upgrading abilities, and your upgrading your ability mods as well. It makes a big difference when you do actually fill this out and you increase the environmental damage you're doing. So what I would recommend you do at first when I was getting cards, duplicates of two cards maybe that I wouldn't use. I was holding off and I wasn't upgrading them but I would say go in and upgrade them. You get a ton of resources to actually upgrade your cards and the quicker you upgrade them the more XP you get towards increasing your training level so you can do more environmental damage which really helps out. This next tip here then will save you an absolute ton of resources when it comes to adding mods for your cards. So when you complete a mission you unlock a gamma coil. Your gamma coil is how you unlock new cards you can see. I do have five different cards in total I can choose from here. Now there will be specific cards the first time it comes up you will want to select them but once you get to a point when you've got the majority are all in the cards of the game you start seeing a lot of duplicates when you see the duplicates pick the cards that have the mod on them already even if it's a mod you don't actually want now the reason for that is you can see that if you're to add a mod to a card that doesn't yet have a mod it costs 50 currency if you're looking to re-roll an existing mod on a card to a new one then it only costs 20 currency so you're more than cutting in half the cost of actually getting a mod on the card so you're much better to have a modded card in the first instance and change it than try and add a brand new mod to a card that doesn't actually have one so once again this will save you an absolute ton of resources doing this what you can do as well if for any reason you've got a card and you don't want a mod on it i'm not sure why you would want that but you can actually remove the mod and that will give you some resources as well. The Abbey Grounds and the side mission that goes along with it is something that's most definitely worth looking into in the game. You can get various rewards in the back of it but it's just a really interesting story as well and the reason I'm looking at this particular book here I can't look at it anymore because I've actually finished all the side missions within the Abbey but if you go to this book if you're stuck at any point in the Abbey Grounds as to where to go next to progress the side mission then go to this book and it will actually tell you and on top of that as well it will actually give you arcane knowledge so that part is useful but if you're really hitting your head against the wall thinking what am I supposed to do next to unlock the next part of this side mission I'm not going to tell you what the side missions are are, but if you're wondering what to do next then go here and this will give you a, a pretty obvious hint as to what you need to do. For this final tip then we're going to circle back to the arcane chest. This is actually a location of all the chests. I wasn't showing it for this reason but if you're curious where the chests are this is actually where they all appear. But the reason I'm showing this is that we talked about earlier on in the video how you can reopen old chests and how you have your common and your rare chests that you can open without using an arcane key. Now what you want to do every few days if you check the map you can actually see chests that are available to be reopened. You don't need to run around the entire map and hope 
open, they are available to be used again. You'll see that if a chest has already been opened, it'll be a slightly greyer icon. Whereas if it's one that's available for you to open, then it will be the, the brighter colour and it will be all white. And if you see that, then you want to go out, you want to open it, especially once again, if it's a common or rare chest, because it's not costing you anything to open it and you get a ton of goodies from it. You'll get resources and you'll get various different consumables that will help out on your harder difficulties as well. So that there is 10 tips to get you started with Marvel's Midnight Suns. There's a whole lot more going on in the game and I didn't really touch on combat at all in this video and there's a lot going on with that. So I will be doing more videos at a later date with some tips for new players. So if this one has been helpful, please do take the time to hit the like, share and subscribe button. And thanks for tuning in. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon.